Hi, in this video, I'm going to take you through the features of Axiom.ai's builder. On screen, currently, you'll see Axiom.ai is open on the dashboard. To access the builder, all I need to do is click New Automation. Once in the builder, the first thing you want to do is name your automation. I'm going to click inside the title New Automation in the top left corner. Press delete. I'm going to call this Insta DM. I'm also going to add a little meta information in there so I can understand the state this automation is in. I'm going to type in in development. That's my title set. Now on to the next thing. Next up, saving your automation. You'll notice the save button in the top right hand corner, which you can use as often as you want. But please note when you run your automation, it will be automatically saved. And when you exit the builder, Axiom will ask if you want to save your progress. Next up, if you ever want to return to the dashboard, it's pretty simple. There's a back button in the top left hand corner. Click it you will be prompted whether you want to save your changes. Another feature of Axiom.ai's builder is the ability to duplicate your automations. In the top right hand corner, you'll see a kebab menu, the vertical three dots. I'm going to click on it. There you can see you can save your automation as a duplicate. This will allow you to create different versions of your automation and experiment. Next up in the builder, you'll see just off center here that I'm circling with a pointer, we've got these three options to begin building your automation. First of all, we've got the large button that says add first step, and this will launch the step finder so you can start creating your automations from scratch. Next up, import your automation. This allows you to import axioms that may have been shared with you via the export and template option. If you're not importing an axiom as a starting point, you could also use the start from template option. If you click on the underlined link, you'll see you're taken to a page where you're asked what you want to automate. Choose an option, for example, web scraping. Then you can select a template of your choosing. Next up, working with a step finder. The step finder can be open from different places within the builder. First of all, if you've got a blank automation, simply by clicking the add first step will open up the step finder. Now, if, you're, if you've already added some steps or you're editing, editing an automation that's been shared with you, you'll notice you can launch the step finder from other places. I'm gonna quickly add some more steps. First of all, you'll notice that there is now a button at the bottom of your automation which will open up the step finder there, and this will insert steps at the bottom of your automation. You'll also see on screen, I've got a loop through data step, which contains nested steps. Now, you'll notice an add sub step, and this will add steps, or launch the step finder to add steps at the bottom of the nest, not at the bottom of the automation. Next up, if I want to launch a step finder to insert steps in between or above other steps, just simply move the point around and you'll see a gray bar. Click on it to launch the step finder and insert your step above or below another step. You've seen how simple it is to open the step finder. If you want to close it, just click or move your pointer into the grayed out area and click to close the step finder. So you've mastered opening and closing the step finder. Now let's teach you a little bit about adding steps. So within the step finder at the top, you'll see we've got this search. This makes it really handy to find steps you want to do to automate your action. All you need to do is enter a term that you're familiar with, like for example, Google Sheets, and then you'll see the steps associated with Google Sheets. Or if I wanted to find a click, to click a button, I could just type in click, and again, scrape for scraping steps. Simple as that. Now, just below the search, we have beginner snippets. These are collections of steps to automate common use cases. For example, we've got a collection of steps 
down here to fill in a form. Or just above that, we've got various collections of steps that help you make a web scraper. Now, if you're feeling brave and you want to dive in and just build your automation by discovering the steps that you need, you can just simply scroll down, click Expand All, and you'll see a full list of all the steps that Axiom has on offer. And it's a pretty comprehensive list for automating your tasks in the browser. You'll also see just below the search, we've got the categories linked. So if you wish to go to our interact steps, which you use to automate the browser actions, you can just click there. Quickly, before we move on from the step finder, there are some useful keyboard shortcuts and little hacks. So let me just show you. Up and down key will help you traverse the steps. Now, if you want to add a step without closing the step finder, you could use shift return, or you can simply use, if you're using the mouse pointer, you could also use shift and click to add the steps. And you'll see in the background, the step was added. So that's quite useful. You could also um, use escape to close the step finder, just like that. Let me open it again and demonstrate that again. So that's a nifty little shortcut. And here's a super cool one. If I wanted to add multiple steps of the same type, I can simply type enter for enter text. I can use star and eight, and that give, give me, or allow me to enter eight times that step. And you can see those steps have been added. So that's those are some pretty handy um, shortcuts to use when working with the Axiom Step Finder. This is a great point to learn about how to move steps, disable them, delete them, etc. So what I'm going to do is you'll see this little tick box to the left of your step number and the step titles. What I'm going to do is click on that and you'll see we open up this toolbar just above these steps. This toolbar allows you to delete enable, disable steps, and insert them into a loop. So let me just take you through those functions one by one. So first up, moving steps. So if you want to move a step or a group of steps, you can just click on the ones you wish to highlight, then scroll to where you want to move them to, click, and click Move. And you'll see those steps have been moved there. Next up, if you want to duplicate steps, again, all you need to do is select them, click where you want to duplicate them to, and press copy your selection, as simple as that. Next up, deleting steps. As you can see, I've got far too many steps here, so I'm going to delete a few, and I can delete one, or I can delete many, and put it in the toolbar, I need to press delete, and then confirm. That's how to delete steps. Next up, moving steps into a loop. So you may have steps outside of a loop, as in I'll just demonstrate here. And you just simply want to wrap them in a loop. You can also do this from the toolbar by highlighting the steps you want to insert into a loop and clicking loop and choosing the loop through data step. And you'll see those steps move inside a loop. Now, last up, disabling and enabling steps. If I want to batch disable or enable, I can simply highlight the step and press disable, and those steps will be disabled. At the same time, if I want to enable them, I can just press enable. Next up, working with steps. You'll notice every step has a unique number just to the left of the step title. And that represents the order in which that step will be executed. Next up, step title. Now, step titles are really useful. You can edit them on any step. And what we do is um, we add a little bit of metadata in there to describe what that step is doing so we can better understand an automation. For example, loop. This could be a loop, and we could call it entering data into form. Or you'll see down here, a step has been 
renamed enter text email. So I know that step is going to be entering an email address, for example. OK, enough about the step title. Now, if you want to expand or collapse the step to interact with it, you simply click between the title and the vertical menu or kebab menu on the right, and that will expand and collapse the step. You can, of course, expand and collapse nested steps as well. OK, disabling steps. Now, you can do this individually from each step, again, using the kebab menu. If I click on that, you'll see I've got an option to enable or disable the step. You'll see, also see a useful link towards docs and a video on how to use. Next, deleting steps. Well, I've got that menu open, so I can just click delete. And you'll also see I had the option to select the step here. And that allows me to select that step to move it into a loop, delete it, disable. And I can, of course, select additional steps. OK, let me just deselect. You'll also notice these plug icons and names. These are what we call tokens, and these tokens indicate steps have data to share. And that I can insert that data. More about that later. Steps also come with, if I expand this step, they come with an output preview here. And you can see it shows three rows of the preview of the Google Sheet data. Running from the builder. So it's pretty straightforward. You just click on Run. Providing you've got the desktop app installed, you will be shown a link to run in the desktop app or in the cloud. Choose what your preference is. We do recommend running frequently when developing your automations so you can test and fix as you go along. Next up, settings. If we go into the vertical menu, top right hand corner of the builder, if I click, you'll see I have an options for settings. If I click on that, you'll see that we've got settings to do multiple things from configuring a scheduler, changing time zone, setting up notifications, I can store my cookies, I can import and share an axiom, continue on error is another useful setting, interacting with iframes, if you're ever selecting data with the scraper and you see blue, turn on the interact with iframes, disable the page monitoring, and then several options to use a different executable path, share my Chrome profile, and load other extensions. OK, we've come to the end of the tour of the builder. I've got a couple of little Easter eggs to show you. You may have noticed in the kebab menu, top right hand corner, we have some shortcuts highlighted here. Control Z and Control Y, they allow you to undo any deletions or redo anything you change. Pretty handy. You'll also find a link to a debugger documentation that can be useful too. There's more about the debugger, by the way, in the documentation site. This video has been recorded to give newer users of Axiom an overall view of the Axiom Builder.